everybody. Hi, friends. Well, from beautiful Salt Lake City, Utah. It's Thank God I'm Atheist. The podcast. I'm Frank Feldman. And I'm Dan Beecher. And coming up on the show today, Dan, turns out spiritual practices might have some benefit. If you can figure out what the hell the word (laughs) spiritual means, which I never, I'm so mad about it. I love that that's your public facing take on the word spiritual. I just heard you talk about what it is. <laughs> I, you heard me talk about what they define it as. Oh, okay. All which right. is fine. Okay, <laughs> then we'll just use that. Anyway, uh, what they're talking good. about is like oh. yoga, meditation, that sort yeah. of thing. And we're going to talk about that. But why does that have to be spiritual? Why can't that just be helpful? <laughs> why can't that just be <laughs> psychologically <laughs> useful? <laughs> What the hell does spirit have to do with anything? Oh, golly gee. Okay. Because anyway, we'll get to it. Well, fine. I will rant later. (laughs) But first, we need to get to some some news from the week, Dan. Yeah. So I've got the story of a school librarian uh, (laughs) who is fighting back against uh, those that would defame her online, uh, which is this is a problem. This is happening right now in the United States. Uh, on a on a mass scale uh, where uh, librarians in particular are being targeted for the not taking down books maybe that are in their in their library on certain topics and might have certain themes lgbtq materials whatever right man can i just say that the queer community is ruining it for everybody <laughs> Well, anyway, so um, and uh, and so people will take to social media and they'll and and even worse, to be honest, they'll go after uh, these librarians. Um, oh, yeah. And it's really it's really ugly. And it's obviously not the way to go about um, seeking change. You know, you don't call and threaten or call names right. and, and whatnot. Well, anyway, uh, Amanda Jones down in Louisiana uh, she's sick and tired of it. And so she's suing, uh, a couple of her defamers. She's taking them to court. It sounds like to me, she's probably got a pretty good case because they're lying. These, these people are getting online and they're saying things that just are not true. And then it, it, it hurts her reputation, right? Like these right. words do have consequences. And she, sort of they picked on the wrong person, right? Because she's also the president of the Louisiana Association of School Librarians. So they went after somebody who's already sort of has a little bit of clout and a little bit of standing. And, uh, and she's hearing from, you know, people in her organization, members of her organization who are facing the same problems. Right. And so she's just tired of it. Um, and she says, I've had enough for everybody. Nobody stands up to these people. They just say what they want and there are no repercussions and they ruin people's reputations and there are no consequences. Um, yeah. and so good on her for Christ's Go sake. This is what people need to start doing. Like these, these lies that people tell online have real consequences. And until there are uh, consequences for them, right? Then they're just going to keep doing it because these platforms won't police it. They absolutely flat refuse. So right. take it to the courts. And, uh, and so I'm super stoked. There's actually a, a GoFundMe, uh, to support her. It's easy enough to find Jones librarian. I think was all I had to type in Louisiana. Okay. And I found it. If anybody's interested, it's probably a, a, a pretty good cause to support. So that that's going on. You can't call someone a pedophile or a groomer. Yeah. Right. Oh, God. Just because they're like, no, I support, you know, free yeah. speech and freedom of thought. And, 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 and these books are not pornographic. Yeah, this is what we need to be watching out for is these people are a they're yes, they're trying to ban books, but they're they are calling members of the queer community, members of the LGBTQIA community pedophiles. You know, I, I I'm not going to I when I was listening to different audio from the week to to figure out what to play this week, I decided not to play this one. But there was a preacher literally saying that all 
gay people, all gay men are pedophiles. And every time a kid is raped, they become gay. That's how extreme they're, oh they're, my God. they're getting. Well, so my next story, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to continue with the book theme. Uh, Ooh, lots okay. of, uh, lots of school districts around the country are getting back into that book, Bannon. Oh. It's, uh, you know, it's whether fun. it's Steve it's Bannon or book Bannon, there's no good Bannons, uh, anymore. Anyway, uh, the, the, so I'm going to tell us about the Keller Independent School District outside mm. of Fort Worth, Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, they had a list, a running list of books that sort of community members thought were inappropriate for children. Oh, And yeah. they had been sort of, you know, working through this list or whatever. And then right before school started, they just decided to pull all of the books, just all of them. They send it out every school. All so there's the school no books staff. left. Like, I'm, I'm confused. No, no, no. All of the books that were on this list. On the list. Okay. It was like, it was over 40 books. And uh, they finally just reached out to all of these schools and just said every, all the staff, they got to pull. If this book appear, if any of these books appear, you got to get them out. <laughs> okay. The way that this list was created was just, you know, members of the community could there was some process that they could uh, just complain about the the impropriety of, of of certain books, and one of the books on that list was every version of the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, oh, so yeah, no. in in Texas, briefly there was a moment where uh, the Bible was banned in schools, <laughs> not by us. But rather by the uh, by, by, by but, the conservative right. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to say Ramona Quimby, age eight. Uh, <laughs> that one's banned too. <laughs> she is very clearly a lesbian. Oh, and well, yeah. And her sister Bezos. Mm. <laughs> I I know I read a Ramona book or two in my oh, childhood. Yeah, I remember nothing. What? Oh my God. I remember it all. They were so yeah, good. I sure loved those books. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, well, Dan, I've got yeah. a, I've got another story about. Uh, <laughs> Is it more books? No, it's but it's schools. Um, okay. In this case, school sports, uh, high school athletics here in Utah. Uh, oh, the organization that oversees um, high school athletics, they, they receive some complaints from parents that some girls don't look quote unquote feminine enough. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I see where this is going. Uh, suggesting of course that the, the female athlete in question is actually transgender and there, and therefore by Utah law, not for whatever reason, not allowed mm. to play sports against other female exactly athletes. yeah so um the utah high school activities association looked into the matter they uh they launched an investigation after the parents of two girls who took second and third place in a competition last year complained that the first place winner <laughs> <laughs> may not actually be a biological girl Oh my um, God, that is some some bad sportsmanship right there. <laughs> I, I don't even yeah. think she's a girl. <laughs> well, you and my, the- <laughs> my girls could never lose ever <laughs> to anybody. Uh, that must be a, a that is a full grown man. People in the know say that those that the two girls uh, were outclassed by the by the first place winner. Like that, it was not even close. <laughs> um, and, uh, the governor chimed in Spencer Cox. He, he took your stance. Um, yeah. he said, the quote is my goodness, we're living in this world where we've become sore losers and we're looking for any reason to figure out why our kid lost. I have a real problem with that story. Making <laughs> allegations like that are a little disturbing to me, he says. Um, and yeah, rightly so. Yeah. He says, um, actually dodging the real issue, which is that you allowed in your state to. Oh, sure. It. Anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. But. Although um, he actually fought against it. He was actually kind of cool on that one. He, yeah, 
he he he's an interesting character that that uh spencer cox anyway uh the the investigation did uh require that the school where this uh student athlete attended uh that they check their records um <laughs> and uh they said based based on our records there isn't a question so then together we asked and the school asked them to check uh their feeder schools to double check to see f- as far back as the records of the students would go and see if she was always female the school went back to kindergarten and she'd always been a female <laughs> okay so they did their homework and they they confirmed that good this Lord. very good athlete was actually a female like this is this is the world that we live in now actually actually a female as though a trans athlete wouldn't actually be a female fair enough right yeah yeah i don't know it's all so stupid like ladies and gentlemen if you have kids in sports it's not important that's you know what not I mean? like, how parents take it these days. I know, it is but it's not, not. how I don't give athletics a was when we were kids. And it was already your, ugly. Your kids in high school or junior high athletics, it doesn't matter. It, no, it if does. they lose, if they win in the long run, in the, in the real world. I mean, yeah, may, there may be some scholarships, some, some college scholarships that, that are at, in play or whatever. It still doesn't matter. They want all, every kid has to be like a world-class athlete. I know. And it's just, it's absurd. If you have ever, if you have a 10 year old playing soccer and you have screamed at a ref, you're bad. You need to check yourself. (laughs) You need to do some introspection. Do some yoga. We'll talk about that at the end of the show. Okay. Yeah. Good idea. Um, anyway, I'm going to take us to Australia. Okay. Skiz! <gasps> there's skizzing. <laughs> there's there's skizzing all over the place in Australia. No! Which uh, territory talked, is left? Which... Right. We talked recently about the Anglican Communion sort of bunting on the question of uh, whether or not it's okay to be gay in the world and actually have weddings and you know be ordained a priest or whatever. And apparently. The Anglican Diocese in Australia uh, has has dis- has split oh. a splinter group oh. now calling themselves the Diocese of the Southern Cross has oh, uh, charming. decided to uh, to clip themselves off because boy are they mad about the gays. Oh, poor. it's very sad. Um, the they are led by a guy by the name of Glenn Davies, who was actually the the former Archbishop of Sydney. So you, I would oh, wow. think that the that the Archbishop of of major metropolitan area would would be more cool, but alas, <laughs> not cool, mm. not cool at all. Uh, he literally said uh, that. He said, this is a sad day in many ways. If the leadership would repent and turn back to the teachings of the Bible, we wouldn't need the Diocese of the Southern Cross. I'd shut it all down and come back. Well, okay. I mean, (laughs) you can can say that. Are you going to turn, repent and turn back to the Bible and no longer wear, you know, cloth made of two fibers? Mm. And Cease with your sinful eating of shrimp. I just, I just feel <laughs> you like you don't know, Dan. He I probably know. he doesn't eat shrimp. He yeah, and he is, only single fiber clothing. That's it. He he obeys every law in the every Bible. single every law. single one. He's of them. a very very serious Anglican. Apparently, <laughs> uh, though not anymore. Now he's a oh. very serious whatever he is. Southern Crosser. Southern Crosser. Mm. Getting crossed by the Southerners. <laughs> oh, man. All right. It's well, getting, it's, it's, I can't keep track. I don't, like, you used to know if it was an Anglican, you could probably count on them being pretty cool about stuff. And like now, all of, all of the, you know, whatever the denomination is, now mm-hmm. they have sub denominations and I can't tell which one's which. And so I don't know who's, uh, 
I don't know which ones are assholes and which ones are okay. I know. I so know. I just assume they're all assholes. Ever since the UU split, it, you just You're can't right? tell. It's just, it, they're no it's, longer UUs, they're just U's. Why have U's we never and... thought to call them double U's? <laughs> the Unitarian Universalist. Why is that not double The double U? U's. The double U's. That's funny. All right. Dan. Yeah. North Dakota. Fargo, to be specific. Aw. Uh, there's a school board up there. Yeah. Uh, like I would like, imagine like there have. are a few of them. Like you have in yeah, sure. uh, for, for your local schools. The Fargo Board of Education did something uh, kind of surprising uh, a couple weeks ago. Seven of the nine members voted to cancel the previous board's edict that they always start with uh, the, the Pledge of Allegiance at their meetings. Interesting. Um, and so this, as you can imagine, it didn't just, uh, the story didn't just stay there. Uh, it kind of spread. The people across the nation heard about it and got very upset. Well, I'm imagining that like Fox News or one of one of the uh, outrage mongering oh, yeah. outlets got a hold of it. Oh, yeah, because they were clear about it, Dan. They they were like they they said that the pledge uh, does not align with the school district's diversity and inclusion code uh, in part because the phrase under God does not include all faiths. Damned right. And they are absolutely correct. And I think they were correct in in uh, not not uh, doing the pledge. Well, after a lot of uh, profanity laced voicemails, uh, nasty emails, messages on Facebook, you name it, the board has uh, voted to 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 back away from that decision. Oh my um, god! It's just. <laughs> They were literally, literally just intimidated yeah. out of their, uh, their convictions. Well, uh, yeah. And also, um, apparently there is some new legislation that's, uh, been proposed that would require, um, public schools and governing bodies to administer, to administer the pledge at meetings. Um, administer. It's, ad- it makes ad- it sound like ad- it's administer. like a, a drug. <laughs> yeah. You have to take. No, it must be, must be, yeah, I guess recited would be more uh, appropriate. Uh, it's but, such a creepy thing to do anyway, just the, I'm sure all of our foreign listeners, all of our non-American listeners recognize that it is just the creepiest thing that we do in this country to make our children pledge their elite. It just sounds Nazi-ish. It's, well, and it, it well, the birth of it is from that era. Yeah. Right. And in fact, initially, American school kids um, gave the Nazi salute. It wasn't called that, but the Nazi salute. That's true. They They, they, held their their, hand out. Their arm outstretched in front of them. (laughs) Come Along come the Nazis. And and, well, we we promptly changed that. But nonetheless, uh, there was one dissenting vote. They, uh, let's see, from uh, Nyamal Day. Um, She's a refugee who fled war-torn Sudan. And uh, she refused to vote for it. Um, she voted no. And uh, she, at the meeting, she played a voicemail that had been left for her from, uh, from a man who called her a slave, a racist, and a Nazi. Wow. And that's, that's three very different things. <laughs> when, when you're compiling your list of things you're calling someone to no. insult them, <laughs> just... Those are disparate ideas. Nah, you just, if it's offensive sounding, you just, you throw it in. You just throw it out You just throw it in. Yeah, so she said that uh, reversing the decision would be giving in to hate. Um, Correct. And uh, She was correct. She's absolutely correct about that. Um, She says, we won't be rewarding our children or students in our district for acting in this way, but we know that this moment will pass. Let's get back to the work that we are elected to do, and that is to find a solution to our teacher shortages, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. She goes on. Uh, Another board member um, who reluctantly voted, uh, but he did vote to to, uh, reverse their decision, Uh, he said that uh, the angry messages that he received, uh, he figures uh, less than 20% of them came from Fargo, 
Right. And uh, he acknowledged that his vote uh, to bring back the pledge was influenced by people that he does not represent. And he says, but I hope you'll forgive me because I truly believe it is in our best interest of our schools to do so. Uh, the disruptions and the threats must end so we can have a successful start to our school year, except for the fact that you were bullied into it. And I think you need to take a lesson from the school librarian that I mentioned earlier yeah. and stand up to this. Have a little courage of your yeah. conviction. Because you gave them another win. Right. And, and they're just going to, they're you emboldened the, and empowered. Yeah. You sent this. the message that bullying works. Yeah. And I know that it's, it's got to be scary. Right. To start getting calls like that. Yeah. I mean, especially when you like what you signed up for was to be on the school board of a small yeah. little area. You know right. what I mean? Like, yeah, I get that. But like at the same time, like you made the right decision. Now, the one thing that I guess they could say is um, whether or not we start our meetings with the pledge. Uh, that's probably not our issue that we're here to address. Yeah. Um, and so, but not, but I, I still think this whole thing of like, we're in a really rough time and yeah. there's, there's never been a time where people, public officials who made a controversial decision, uh, didn't get nasty phone calls. Right. But now well, thanks I mean, the to the internet, the phone they did. <laughs> Fine. Thank, thank, thanks, Dan, for clearing that up. Uh, no, but thanks to obviously this era of Fox News and the Internet and the, the, the way that news spreads. I mean, this would have been a regional issue. It would have just, you yeah. know, that that crazy school board that decided to uh, to, to yeah. not say the Pledge of Allegiance. That decided to actually honor all of their students instead yeah. of just the few that were Christian. Right. Exactly. So. Well, there you go. Um, speaking of not honoring, I'm gonna I'm gonna close this out with a story. About a year and a half ago, we told a story that I, uh, that that we kind of labeled "good news?" Question <laughs> mark. Okay. It was like, uh, it, I I think I think we were still very skeptical, but uh, it sounded like. Mm, Maybe somebody's doing the right thing here. And that was that the uh, the U.S. branch of the Jesuits mm. had decided that uh, they were going to own up to a huge, horrible thing that they had done, which was back in the 1830s, they own, the, the Jesuit owners of Georgetown University uh, owned like 272 enslaved people. Mm. And they then sold them to uh, a Louisiana to Louisiana plantation owners to pay off the school's debts. Now, mm -hmm. yes, that is a bad thing to do. Enslaving people and trading in slaves mm -hmm. is awful. So the the U.S. branch of the Jesuits decided that they were going to raise a hundred million dollars as part of a reconciliation uh, plan. Mm, right. Yeah. I remember and that they this. were going to then uh, give to the descendants of these, uh, these 272 enslaved people. Mm -hmm. Well, it, we, we, we thought that was pretty cool, but we were skeptical. Uh, now it turns out that Joseph Stewart, who is the, uh, the, maybe the president of the group of descendants has called attention to the fact that they seem to be dragging their feet. Oh, uh, no. Okay. The, you know, they had a timeline that they were supposed to be uh, pushing it toward. And by the way, the $100 million was supposed to be a step in the direction of the broader goal of a billion dollars oh. that they were going to try and raise from a, in a variety of ways. Well... It turns out that this uh, that this Jesuit group that committed of their own volition to do this, they they're doing things like they recently uh, sold a plantation uh, land oh. that they owned, okay, uh, to the tune of fifty seven million dollars. Wow! But they didn't. They haven't yet moved that fund those funds into the trust. That they're so yeah. like That's they keep. It's a lot of money, Dan. 
It's hard to let go of it. It's hard to let go. Uh, and you know they have apparently a whole bunch of other lands mm. that that could probably you know that they are looking in, at selling, but it doesn't look like they're all that eager to actually fulfill their their own stated goal of trying to raise this money. Hmm. So uh, so yeah, this guy's calling attention to it as he rightfully should, because uh, you know there's. It it's all well and good to get all of the attention for doing the right thing. <laughs> but then if you don't actually do the right thing, if you just say, hey, look at us, we're we're going to do the right thing, and everybody applauds them and says how great they are, and then they don't, well, fuck you, Jesuits. That's uh not cool. Anyway, yeah, we'll follow see. Follow through, guys. A little bit of follow through, yeah. They were like, oh, cool, the right thing. I can see it. Uh, I just can't <laughs> quite bring myself to actually do it. Uh, yeah. I want to agree to this. This sounds really good. <laughs> I think I should agree to this. Taking responsibility is hard. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, if you want to tell us a story about you taking responsibility or someone else not taking responsibility, anyway, any kind of responsibility story or any story relating to anything that we've talked about today, feel free to write into us podcast at thankgodimatheist.com or call and leave us a voicemail message. The telephone number is 424 666 8442. Stick around, we've got more show coming up. Well, Frank, Dan, we've been talking about how, um, you know, we talk a lot on this show lately about how the Christian nationalists are really making a push to take over and they're saying all of the quiet parts out loud, which is refreshing. It is nice that they're being <laughs> uh, overt rather than covert about it, because yeah. the tradition was you just lie. Mm, right. You know, like like all of the Trump nominees for the Supreme Court did. They just <laughs> right. lied about their actual feelings. And then when they got into power, they did the opposite of what they said they were going to do. Yeah, just like that. Uh, because they're Christians, and that's what they do. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is a guy named Jaron Jackson, who is running for the Oklahoma State Senate. Okay. Uh, he's, he's a young bearded fellow. And, uh, and this is what he has to say. My strategic mission is to shift the Overton window to include the gospel of Jesus Christ. If politics is an arena, this arena has pushed God out of the picture. Amen. We have false paradigms, right, left, conservative, liberal, right, Democrat, Republican. That's a false binary. The choice is Christ or chaos. Woo! It's Christ or communism. Whoa. And so whenever Jesus taught, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one gets to God but by me. People need to know that. Philippians 2, every knee will bow, every oh. tongue will confess. And so my job in this race, not only to defend the Constitution and represent the fine people of this community, I am bringing the gospel directly into politics. I'm doing it with the zeal of a former infantry officer. I'm doing it as a Bible thumper, King James Bible guy, and I'm bringing it right at people in a loving way that brings the truth mm. in direct conflict with the chaos of the day. And I believe that's important. Jesus taught in John 17, 17, sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. People need to know the scriptures. People need to know about Jesus. And there's too many people that have designed our political discourse to push God to the side. My job is to bring him right mm. through the front door. Right through the front door, Frank. Oh, my God. You can't. Yeah. Because you can't let people get away with false binaries. Like, right. Like Christian or communist. Christian <laughs> or chaos. Right. Yeah, yeah. Those, Christian those... or chaos, that's a true binary, <laughs> unlike Republican and Democrat. <laughs> I, I, I love that he literally talked about moving the Overton window. Like, mm. this is what they're like. Th this was always their quiet goal mm. on the on the right to mm -hmm. push the Overton window. For those of you who don't know, is like basically there's a, this proposed 
I window uh, where on one on one extreme of one far side of it is what is considered extreme right politics, and on the far other far side is extreme left politics. And what's been happening in this country is a concerted effort, a successful concerted effort to push what is considered far right and what is considered far left to the right as far as they can. So what is in the in other parts of the world, you know, in in Europe, what would be, you know, the things that are considered extreme left in this country are center right or, are you know, are, or at least center mm-hmm. That might be a little bit of a stretch, but yeah. Well, the, we, we get, the Democratic we Party would be considered center right. There, that might be a little more fair. Yeah. And then the uh, yeah, so the ex- what's considered extreme left in this country is just barely left of center in a lot of places because they've been moving that over to window. But again, they didn't say it out loud. They didn't actually like spell it out. They just kind of secretly talked about it behind closed doors. But now they're just overtly saying that. You know, we got to get Jesus in. Mm, yeah. So that's what's happening in our country. Good stuff. Ooh, yo, yo, yo. For sure. Uh, so speaking of what's happening, we had a few people. We had a little bit of correspondence. Um, Robert wrote into us to say, hey, listening to the podcast, I have seen Hamilton. You remember we talked about the uh, the church that put on the illegal show, <laughs> the illegal Hamilton mm-hmm. production. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have seen Hamilton. I do live in NYC after all, but haven't seen iterations of it. Uh, except for in my second COVID's fever dreams, I definitely watched Ham Mouston, uh, <laughs> because there are no cats and in America and the streets are made of cheese. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thanks for putting that little fever nugget into my brain. It was delightful. <laughs> so that sounds wonderful. There you go. I I I I'll, I'll take an all an all rodent version of. I could see rapping a, a Hamilton Jefferson rap battle done by done by mice. That's <laughs> I like it. I like the idea. Well, I mean, it would fall in probably into parody. You might actually be able to get away with something. Like <laughs> yeah, there you go. You know? that's fair use right there. Yeah, probably, possibly. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> Don't take uh, theater law advice from a podcast <laughs> not this one for sure not anyone yeah anyway mm. i you know what i can i just take a moment to say that the the things are weird in this country times are tough but i i'd like to encourage people if they can to uh to patronize our show <laughs> uh if you you know it, it's it's only if you can this is a pay what you want situation uh but if if our show is of value to you we encourage you to go to thankgodimatheist.com and to uh, find the support tab and, uh, you know, just just choose whatever whatever you can kick in. Yeah. It's a it's just a nice thing to do. Uh, we it's been, uh, you know, everybody's kids are getting into school now and it's, it's, it's a it's a crazy time of year. So I understand when uh, when when we have a lag in uh, in are given but uh you know maybe you maybe you've been thinking about it for a bit now would be a great time to go ahead and pause the show go to our website (laughs) click on the things please don't wait till the end of the show don't wait (laughs) why would you wait you're gonna forget you have been forgetting for weeks now you've been meaning to do it just pause the show Get, get, get your credit card out anyway uh we do have one person to thank we do indeed, Dan, our top donor, our Lord and Savior, Devas. Stick around, there's more show coming up. Frank. Dan. Listen, I'm not going to complain too much about sp- the concept of spirituality right now. Okay. Uh, I am just going to say... That for the sake of argument, uh, we're going to say that things, practices that are centering, mm. that are uh, helpful to the self, mm. things the- like meditation, things like uh, yoga, things like just outdoor time. 
Sure. Things that feed the soul. I see. This is my problem. I don't believe in a soul. I have no idea what you mean. Spirit, soul, whatever. Fine. Things that I think I, why can't, why is it so hard to just refer to this stuff as like things that are psychologically beneficial to the self? Right. I don't know. Anyway, because it's easier. It's a word that we all kind of get what people mean by it. I, I swear to God, we don't. We think we get what people mean. <laughs> and everybody means something different, a little bit different when they say it. Yeah, but that's, it's, it's. Anyway, it's in fine. this case, I've defined kind of what we're talking about. Spiritual practices, as they are termed. Things like the yoga, the, the meditation, that sort of thing. Sure. Okay. Uh, you know, there has been talk, there there has been uh, theorizing that that kind of practice, which is very self-focused, very self, uh, it's, it's, it is about the self. And mm. some people have thought that that was maybe, that, that, that those kinds of practices would lead to self-focus in the world, selfishness, oh, self, you know okay. what I mean? Like, like. A disengagement from, uh, from civic uh, duties or or from political engagement, that sort of thing. Well, some new studies have come out, including uh, from a couple of places. The Journal uh, for the Scientific Study of Religion is where where they were published, and they have found that this is not the case. What that that the the spiritual practices lead to greater community engagement, even among the religious. Oh. So if you consider yourself religious but not, you know, not very spiritual, that's one thing. So <laughs> what they looked at really was just the concept of our, how spiritual do you self-report? Okay. All right. Um, There's an interesting anomaly in this. So when they ask questions like, how important is it for you to contribute to the greater good in the world? Okay. And, uh, and you know, the, the respondents have already labeled themselves either very spiritual, moderately spiritual, slightly spiritual, or not at all spiritual. Now, those who label themselves very spiritual, apparently it's very important for them to contribute to the greater good in the world. And it goes down from there. And there are other questions, things like how important is it for you to donate to causes uh, or organizations mm. or uh, do you always vote? And the really interesting thing is that it it's cons and this is a consistent pattern across these things. Those who are very spiritual are are the highest or most, you know, they, they respond that it's most important or whatever. Hmm. And it goes down from there, it, very spiritual. Then it goes down a ways, you know. So, like for instance, on the uh, how important is it for you to contribute to the greater good in the world, mm -hmm. which is kind of a like, what does that even mean? But you know, people. But if who you report, understand what the word spiritual means, you also understand what that is. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> sure. <laughs> like uh, I, I don't know, Dan. I'm the more you go on with this, the less convinced I am of it. And but keep going, and we can talk what? about that. The, this connection, right? Oh, like, okay. Like I like I think there's a sort of that woo ness that people, you yeah. know what I mean, right? The, sure. The, the 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 yogi types they they get a little little wooey. But yeah. That's also the same kind of person who would want to contribute to the greater good already. Well, maybe. Right. Yeah. Sure. Like, I, think, I mean, well, why isn't the why why isn't the conclusion that the that, that people who do want to contribute to the greater good seek out spiritual practices? Like well, yoga? It, that can be the conclusion. We're talking about a correlation here, not a causation. Yeah, okay. Uh, but here, so one of the things I wanted to get to though was this. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch to to this question. How important is it for you to donate to causes or organizations? Those who claimed who who said they were very spiritual. 44% responded very important. Mm. Those who said they were moderately spiritual, 25%. Those who said they were slightly spiritual, it drops all the way down to 14%. Mm. Okay. But then those who said not at all spiritual, 
apparently the Dan Beechers of the world, <laughs> it bumps back up again. What? To 19%. Oh. In, and that is consistent on every one of these. It goes down... It goes down consistently, very spiritual, moderately spiritual, slightly spiritual. Uh -huh. And then when you get to not at all spiritual, it bumps back up a little bit. That's bizarro. I just think I just think that that's what it is. It's people like me who like I don't consider myself spiritual cuz that that word feels meaningless to me, but I'm very connected. I'm very I'm very engaged. I give, I vote, I donate, I give my mm -hmm. time. Yeah. And, uh, and I think that, but I, but also I will say this, I have practices that are important to me that other people would term spiritual practices. Mm. I just don't call them that. So I don't know. I, I don't know how to explain that little, I just think it's fascinating that it is consistent across all of these metrics, all of these questions that it goes down, 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 up. <laughs> Very spiritual, down to moderately, down to slightly, and then boop, uh, bumps up when you say not at all spiritual. That's very interesting. I think that's our listeners. I think a lot of our listeners mm. would respond to not at all spiritual, but are also engaged, uh, civic-minded humans. Yeah. That makes sense. That yeah. seems, that's, I mean... The, the, or that job, that that makes sense to me that that's who yeah and I, and are. and I'm not saying that we are uh, to be clear I'm again not to, not trying to say that there's a causation thing here I'm not saying that our because they listen to us they're like that I'm saying <laughs> that the people who would naturally gravitate to a show like ours right. are that kind of person right which is what I think this whole thing is about anyway yeah it's about yeah if you're like, already I, this a civic minded type of person. You probably have a uh, a deep connection to your to your fellow person. I think I think part of the thing is that like the people who are who are doing these quote unquote spiritual practices mm -hmm. care. Yeah, they care about their lives, they care about themselves, and they care about their fellow humans. Well, you know what it probably is, Dan. You know, <laughs> you, you go to a yoga studio. There's always like a little flyer board. Right. Like they're they like they just see the flyers. They're more they they're, they're already in a place where they see that oh there's oh there's going to be a rally. Oh. I should go to yeah. that. They you yeah know? and they they go on to the you know they get into the Facebook group about uh about meditation or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then somebody's posting about like, you know, the stop get the out gravel and pit, you know? Yeah. Stop the gravel pit. Yeah. <laughs> You've seen those, right? Oh, yeah. <gasps> oh, my goodness. <sighs> anyway, I just think that that's interesting. I think that the whole concept, uh, I, I mean, I think it's very important to, for lack of a better term, feed your soul. Yeah. To tend to, I hate it, the word, but your whatever it is that's meant by your spirit. Yeah. It's important to to tend to it. Well, I I this is what somebody needs to do. Somebody needs to actually do the the study that is that takes people and who are not very spiritual and who are also uh, not very engaged civically mm. and put them into some sort of yoga practice, right? Yeah. They go into the yoga studio. They, they 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 sort of don all the trappings of one of these people, right? And they, or, or they, a they, meditative they, practice. Meditative practice. You you get them to start, you know, brewing kombucha or whatever. <laughs> and wait, wait. Let's not let's not push into the into the periphery here. Let's not wade into the weeds too far. <laughs> and then you see what their civic engagement level is afterwards, right? Oh my gosh! I mean, we we clearly would, be, would have look, muddied the water. You wouldn't know whether it was the kombucha or the yoga, right. but they, if they become more civically engaged, then I think you need to parse it out a little bit, right? Yeah, I w I would like for that study to be done where you take a non. <laughs> engaged per a, a, yeah. you know a person who doesn't have any kind of quote unquote spiritual practice mm -hmm. but i do think that like i i personally think that you'll get the same result from therapy that mm. you'll get from 
uh, from just starting a, uh, a a yoga or a meditative practice. Hmm. You so, know, it's just tending to the self. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, is what is my personal theory. I I have no data to back that up, but but that is my personal theory. Hmm. Because to me, that is a spiritual practice. If we're going to call these things spiritual practices, then I think the therapy counts. If you got I, a good yeah, I, I could get on board with that. Yeah. Because it feels like you're tending to the same thing. It's just yeah. in different ways. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, if you would like to, uh, I, I, if you would like to define spiritual to me in a way that you think makes sense, feel free or if you'd like to reach out about anything please reach out to us podcast at thank god i'm atheist.com or call and leave us a voicemail and tell us about it the telephone number is 424-666-8442 yeah go to the facebook page facebook.com slash tgi atheist click the like button people still do that it's still out there it still exists <laughs> if you'd like to join one of our members only lounges you can do so just go to our website, thankgodimatheist.com slash members only. Yeah. Hey, thanks so much to the Red Rock Hot Club for the use of their fine music. And thanks to Gordon Johnston for the use of his music. And thanks to all of y'all for tuning in. We sure do love it. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.